So thank you very much for joining us today for Genomi Club, brought to you by Genomi Australia. Today we are going to be talking about the gathering foot, and it is a great little foot to be able to gather up um, lighter weight fabrics. And I'll be showing you how to attach the foot, how to change the settings on your machine, and how to um, get different amounts of gather by changing those settings. We will be talking about stitch lengths and also the thread tension, so the top thread tension. So I'll show you on a, I've got the Continental M7 here today. So it has a touch screen to adjust your thread tension. And I've also got a Skyline S6 that I'll be showing you that has got a manual dial. So depending on what machine you have, you can just look in your manual for thread tension and that will show you how to adjust it for your model. Okay, let's go over here and we'll have a look at the feet. And what I'll do is um, I'll show you the foot and sort of what we've been doing in the past. I'll then compare it and show you the differences to the A foot, which is your standard foot from your machine. So here in front of me, I have a nine mil gathering foot. It has got the letter V on it. And then we also have a seven mil gathering foot here. Again, the feet come in a blister pack and it does have a little bit of instructions on the back depending on um, which model you buy and which foot you've bought. They've got instructions on there um, to show you. So the main thing about the gathering foot is that it floats above the fabric and um, allows it to sort of bunch up underneath it, if that's the right way to put it. So if I flip this over, whoops, we can have a look at the back so I can show you. So here on the A foot, which we've all seen before, it's um, very flat through the back. Um, there's a slight raised section just behind where the needle would go through that little jelly bean shape. But other than that, it's quite flat. It makes full contact with all the feed dogs um, underneath to grab your fabric and pull it through to create the stitches. With the um, gathering foot, you can see, and if I turn the other one over, I'll put it sideways, so then you should be able to see. So at the front here, it's quite a flat sort of section, and then it steps up. And again, it's a flat section, but it's raised up, if you think about this being when it's up the right way on your machine, the front part of the foot is grabbing the fabric and will pull it through. But at the back part, because it's slightly raised there, the fabric then sort of bunches itself up behind it. And that then helps to one of the things that's helping to create the gather. The other thing that will help create the gather is the stitch lengths and the thread tension. The other main difference between the gathering foot and your A foot is the A foot has only got one attaching bar, whereas the gathering foot has got two. And what I'll show you is if I attach this shank, I'll attach the foot to my A foot to the shank. And what you'll see is that as you sew, this foot has got um, a flex in it. And that allows you to go up over seams and bulky parts of your whatever you're sewing and then back down, like if it goes up over a seam and back down over a seam. So it's got flexibility to move as you're sewing. With the gathering foot, and there's a few feet that have the two bars on them, our T foot, the button sewing foot, and some of our free motion feet, the QO, QC, if you've got a higher end model, they also have the two bars. And what you do is on your shank, there is a little hook at the back. And I'm going to hook in the back little bar and then it will slide on and attach at the front. So then you can see here, there's no um, flex because the foot's held in the two positions. And to release it, it's just a matter of pressing the little black lever at the back. You lift it off the front and then it will come off from the back. Now, because we are just sewing a straight stitch for our gather, the other thing that is good if you have one for your machine is a straight stitch needle plate because that will help um, stop any fabric being pulled down 
um, into the needle, um, needle plate area, and it will also um, help hold those stitches nice and straight for you. So I'm going to move over to my machine. I'm going to replace my needle plate and change over from my zigzag needle plate to my straight stitch needle plate. So we'll just move the camera up here. And we're going to press the lockout key on our um, sewing machine. And that will lock my machine. And then on the Continental M7, it is an automatic needle plate lifter. I just have to press the button and it will automatically raise up for me. And we'll swap it over. You may have a machine that has a button that you push to um, lift off the needle plate, or it may have screws that you need to unscrew and replace um, with your needle plate. And now I'm going to attach the foot. So I'm going to um, lock my machine again, and we might go to the other camera. Yep. So I've locked my machine. I'm going to manually raise up my foot and I need to raise it up into its highest position. So it's got its normal sort of stopping position. And then this particular model has got a higher press. Depending on your model, you may or may not have that. And you need a hook in the back. I'll try and do it with my other arm so that I'm not, haven't got my hands in the way. So I've hooked in the back part of the foot. And then as I press the little black button on the back, I can click up the front. So my foot is on and I've got my straight stitch needle plate. So on the machine, I'm going to, oh, and I've got three different types of fabric. I've got a chiffon, I've got a very lightweight sort of poplin, and then I've got sort of like a medium weight cotton. So I'll be showing you those three fabrics and that um, depending on the weight of the fabric, that will affect how much gather there is as well. So I've got my normal straight stitch here. I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to adjust the stitch lengths. So I might start with, we'll go up to say like about a three and a half. And I'm going to leave my thread tension at the default. So the default on this model is 3.4. But if when I get to change it, I will just press the little plus or minus to go up and down. And what we'll do is I'll show you. Let's go to four. So I've got a stitch length of 3.5 and a top thread tension of four. So I'm going to pick a piece of fabric. So I've just got the, um, so the three pieces of fabric, I've got the black is the chiffon. There's a pale pink, which is the poplin. And then I've got like a greeny sort of color here, which is my um, sort of medium weight cotton. And you can stitch, depending on whether you're um, making a ruffle, you can stitch along the edge. Or if you wanted to um, do like a double ruffle, you can always stitch down the middle and then that's a good fold line. That's like the accessory of the month where we did the little cuff. That's what I've done. I've stitched down the middle. I'm just going to stitch on the edge here. So we're going to start sewing. So I've got that stitch length, three and a half, and a thread tension of four. And we will start sewing and have a look how this. And as this is sewing, you can see it. So I'm not touching anything on here. All I'm doing is guiding left and right. I'll just pull out that little tail of thread. And if we put here, so right at the front, so pretty much where my needle is, is where the foot jumps up and raises up. So right at the front, in front of the needle, there's full contact with the feed dogs. So that's allowing and pulling the fabric into the needle. But at the back behind the needle, there's nothing touching this fabric. This fabric is quite free. So then that's what's causing these little puckers to occur, which is what we want with this foot to get the gathers. And depending on the weight of the fabric, you will get different um, amounts of gather happening out the back. Even if I just show you, I'm just going to increase my stitch length all the way up to five. And you can see just from doing that what the difference will be. See, I'm getting a few more gathers happening. And 
then we've got this lovely little piece that's all gathered up. And I don't know if you can quite see on the screen that this, this side here is a little bit less, you can hold it right there, you can sort of see this end here where I had a 3.4 length and this end I had a 5 length. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pull over our Skyline S6 just so I can show you about changing your thread tension on this machine. So on this model, it is a dial that sits on the top of the machine. Your dial may be at the front of the machine here, and it's generally where your thread, somewhere close by to where you're threading your machine. Um, if you've got something like our HD9 or 6700, it will be a round dial at the front. If it's um, uh, one of our smaller uh, DC models, the thread tension is generally a dial on the front of the machine here, and on then some of the machines, the dial at the top. Um, it may have auto on it, or it may have a range that is your like standard setting. And then it's just a matter of rotating that dial to your desired setting that you want. So at the moment, I don't know if you can quite see, I've got it say on seven now. There we go, we can zoom in. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, you just adjust that to whichever number. So with, um, with the gathering foot, um, this is where a lot of our maths teachers from school will be saying, great, you're using maths in your uh, you know, adult life. Um, sometimes you need to test your fabric out to get the right setting. So if you want something that's a lot more gathered than say this little sample, I would have to make some changes to my settings to um, make more gather. So we had a 3.5 and a 4 thread tension. So what I have to think is the higher those numbers go, the, the more amount of gather there will be. So I'm now going to take my thread tension like up to, say, 8. I'll go to like the other. I've got a stitch length now of 5 and a thread tension of 8. So if we sew this and you'll see the difference that it will make. And if you do want a little bit more gather, you can sort of hold the fabric a little bit behind the foot with your hand, and that sort of stops the fabric being pushed out. Um, but most of the machine will just do the work for you. So... Now we can see there's this little tiny gather. So I don't know if where's the best place to put these so you can see. Yep. yep. So if you have a look here, this one to about halfway was a stitch length of 3.5 and then we did go up a little bit at the end, whereas this one was the stitch length of 5 and then the a tension of 8. So you can definitely see the difference there. Um, this is gathered down to quite a short little lovely little frill there. So I'll just bring you over. I've got a couple of samples here to show you just so you can get an idea of different um, numbers and things. So here we have three different fabrics, but I have used the same settings on the machine. And these pieces of fabric all started out the same length. They're all a 15 inch piece of fabric. So I had a stitch length of five and a thread tension of six. And this is my chiffon. So it's very lightweight fabric. This is my lightweight sort of poplin and then my medium cotton. So you can see there that the same settings, put the white fabric paper under there. Yep. There we go. So you can see there that this same piece of fabric that was the one length. So this is my starting length here was like a 15 inch square. They're all the same. And you can see that it's gathered more. The lighter the fabric is, the more it will gather up. But if I wanted to get more gathers on this slightly heavier fabric, it would just be a matter of changing your settings. So these three here, I've tried to get about the same amount of gather. Didn't quite manage it but I had to change my settings then. So for my heavier weight fabric, 
stitch length five, tension of nine. My sort of lightweight poplin, stitch length five, tension 3.4. And then for my black, I did a length of three and a tension of three. And that gave me then about the same amount of gather for each one. So this is where I said you might need a bit of maths, <laughs> that if you've got, um, say, a skirt waistband and you're wanting to gather in some fabric, you may need to do a little test on your fabric to work out how much gather to put in just to get the, the right amount for you. And if you've got a heavier weight fabric, you'll need to use a different technique. This foot does not work on like your denims and your drills and things like that. It is more for your lighter weight fabric. Um, and here I can just show you to think what we've got here. We go from that to that. What's that? A three, a four, a five, and a... There we go. So this is showing you then this is all the same fabric, but they're all the different um, different settings. So if you just want a very slight ease, this would be good for um, like a tiered skirt where you're going to have multiple layers. And I've got an example of that to show you later where you don't need a lot of gather because it ex it expands each layer, you may just want a small amount of gather. Or over the top of an arm, if you're doing um, setting in a sleeve, you could just use a small amount of gather to get that nice ease stitch in. Whereas if you're wanting, obviously, a lot more frilly sort of things, you may then, so this is just increasing stitch length and thread tension as I went through to get the different amounts of gather. Okay, so let's go over and we'll do another little sample. So I'll work on a piece of chiffon and we're going to, the chiffon gathers up really nicely. I'm going to take my stitch length down to about four or three and a half. And I'm going to take my thread tension down to about four, four and a half because it doesn't need a lot. So I'm going to show you this is um, stitching. I'm going to stitch sort of about two thirds of the way down on my strip. So my strips, um, I'm just going to change the cameras over. Uh, the, the, I'm working about two, uh, one third in from my strip of fabric. And this is a really quick, easy way if you want like a double row of um, little gather cuff. And you can see here the chiffon is gathering up quite easily. So you could do this on a ribbon. I've just got some um, pieces of fabric that I've um, cut for you. So there is where I've sewn like down the, I don't know how much you can see of that. Is it with the black? Yeah. I'll change. I'll do it on a piece pink of fake. A pink piece of fabric. <laughs> and I then can you can see. Now. Move on the pink. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Leave it right there. Oops. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my row of stitching is running down there. You could then just get a piece of ribbon and uh, I've got one behind me. I've got a piece of ribbon here, maybe. No, no ribbon in my in my bag. You could get a piece of ribbon and just stitch a piece of ribbon on there. Um, I'll get a little sample and show you. This would be like if you want to make your own um, garter for somebody getting married <laughs> or you're having like a fancy dress party and you want to make um, frills for like a, a jabot sort of thing, which is like a necktie. Um, so this I have just gathered up some lace and um, just some cotton with lace on the end and then I've put a piece of ribbon over the top. So you could make this as like, yeah, it could be like a little wrist cuff sort of thing. Oh, yes, you can make your own garter. Um, but um, I used to do a lot of this um, when I worked at the ballet when we were doing like the costumes and they'd have like they need a the rough down the front of their um, top, uh, their shirt sort of thing. And so this is the technique that I did on the Accessory of the Month which uh, project, which was this steampunk cuff that we did. And we used a piece of vinyl, some um, velvet ribbon and some lace on it. 
So what I did is I had my starting piece of chiffon, which was like wide like this, and then I've stitched down about sort of, I don't know, a third in from the top, and that's made the gather. If I do it on the pink fabric, you'll be able to see. I'll just, I'll show you what I'm, let's take this up a little bit to get a nice piece of gather. It is so quick and easy. You just let the machine gather up your fabric. So there's my little thing. Um, so I've stitched it. You could choose to just put ribbon down through the middle and then you can make something. Or with the cuff, what I've done is I've actually folded that over the top of itself. Oops. And then you get a double a double sort of row. So you could do that um, even just to make a really easy skirt is that you could, um, uh, one of the things I love doing is like recycling clothes. So you could get like a pair of jeans that you don't wear anymore and cut the just the top part of it to make it like a yoke, gather up some fabric, stitch that around the end and you've got a really easy skirt that you've made. And then you've got... So I'll go through and we'll show a couple of examples. Now, if there are any questions, please put them in the chat or you're welcome to contact your local Janome stockist. There is one and, question. Can you use a oh, twin needle with gather? Uh, yes, you could, but you'd have to use your regular needle plate. You couldn't use your straight stitch needle plate. Um, I don't know if it would really make too much of a difference. Um, to be honest, I've never tried it. Mm. Um, but I can't see why not. The only thing though, is that you will end up cause you've got that in that zigzag at the bottom that it may interfere with the gathering up. You just have to try it to see. Um, there is also a gathering attachment and gathering foot available for an overlocker. So that's another option. If you're gathering lots of things is that there is, um, feet for your overlocker as well. So on this pillow here, we've gathered up two sides of the fabric and we've um, inserted it into um, as strips into this pillow and it makes a really nice decorative sort of section. And this is like a green sort of silky, not quite chiffon. I think it looks like a, a, shot, a shot silk or something, like a lightweight silk. So if I was going to do something like those panels that I want to insert, it would just be a matter of stitching down. I'm going to adjust. So stitching down one side and then the other. So if I stitch on one side of this piece of fabric. And as long as you don't make any um, changes to your settings, it'll gather up the same sort of way on the other side. So it's just a matter then of turning over and we're going to come back to the other side. So I'm now just gathering the other side of this strip. So a ruffler is a slightly larger contraption that sort of sits on the front here and it is more for doing um, like pleats and things. It will also do like a quite a tight little gather, but the ruffler also has adjustment that if you want to do actually pleats, you can set it to do like one pleat and then stitch an inch one pleat. If I sort of pleat this up a little bit and you sort of might see that there. So that's like a pleat. So these are, would be pleated and with the ruffler, you can tell it how deep to make the pleat and how often to do the pleats. So if you sort of, this is another, it's more tucks, it's more tucks in the fabric. Yes. Like big, more formed rather than big sort of flat tucks, whereas mm -hmm. the gathering is more little teeny tiny little Very organic. Pleats. Yeah. Over over. Yes. Like it is, it will be. So then that's that section. Where are we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's my section gathered up that for like this pillow. And then if I wanted to, I would then just 
um, if I cut this little piece, I can then lay this piece. I swap my foot out to my standard A foot. And I've now got a flat piece of fabric and my gathered piece of fabric, and I can now seam them together. Let's go back to your fault settings, some like this, without <laughs> gathering. Don't want to gather this one. And you can gather that one. Yes, anything that's sort of um, either loose or open. So like laces are generally, even though they might be even slightly thicker, they generally have got an openness to them. Um, they'll gather up. Sometimes you just might need to check your fabric. But some fabrics will gather better than others. So I've now stitched there and we've now got this flat piece onto my gathered piece of fabric. And then that's how we've inserted into the pillow here. I mean, we put piping in here as well. So there's piping on the side of the, um, uh, we've put a row of piping, but if you imagine that's the same sort of way that it's been done, your gathering section and your flat section. Okay. Here's another little um, sample on this one here. So what I've done with this is I actually got my piece of fabric and I folded it in half. So I folded my two raw edges together and then I've stitched along the raw edges. And that's given me like this, um, a gathered piece. And then I've just seamed it together and attached it to this quilt. So this is a lovely way to make like Rosetti style sort of things. This is just a little block on a quilt that I've done as a sort of like a foot sampler. It's got buttons and overcasting and things. Now, this particular skirt was done on an overlocker, but you can do the same thing on your sewing machine. So this was just a jelly roll. Yes, we'll now zoom out. So this was a jelly roll and I gathered up each row to the previous row. And you can sort of see, I don't know where, where's our camera today? So there's not a lot of gather on these. It's quite a loose little gather because a jelly roll is only two and a half inch. I'm going to teal bit. This teal bit mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of gather here. You can sort of see it is definitely not, um, it's not gathered like this. It is like a really loose, now I've lost one of my samples. It's probably like this. It's quite a loose little gather. And that's because a jelly roll is only two and a half centimetres. So each time, two and a half inches, two and a half inches thank you. <laughs> <laughs> each time you add on a row, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can see like this is a jelly roll, but this little tiny skirt, which is for like a, like a young tweeny sort of thing, ends up having a, circumference of like it's a very twirly skirt um, so I did do this one on the overlocker which does have the gathering attachment to do in one step the um, gathering and straight stitch it was an accessory month from a couple of years ago um, it was for an apron so you can use those instructions if you're wanting to do something like this um, the other place where you may use your gathering is this is another um, a little dress that we've made and we've gathered on the skirt to a waistband, um, like the yoke part of the skirt. So that's using like a medium sort of weight gather. Again, this is where sometimes if you have, if you're working off a pattern, they might, they'll have a, um, tell you how big to cut your pieces. And then you may have to just do a little test to make sure you get the right amount of gather. But it is so much quicker than doing it I'm going to say the old fashioned manual way where you would stitch rows of stitches and then pull them up. And if I just, I'll just show you that actually. So I've got my regular A foot still on here. I'll just increase my stitch length. So this is how you would in the past do your gathering. 
is I have to bring up my needle thread. So I'm going to um, touch my thread up, down button, needle up, down, and bring up my needle thread. So I've now got my two threads. I'm going to put my foot under here and we're going to start sewing. And depending on what the seam is, you may sew one or two rows of stitching. And we don't want to cut our threads. We just want to lift our needle and our foot and you want to pull out a length of thread and then we can cut it because you need these tails. So that's step one, stitching your seam. Step two is you need to find one of the threads. Doesn't really matter whether it's the top or the bottom. And then you hold on to your fabric and you pull that thread up. And make sure you don't pull it out from the other end. So I can then adjust this. So this is better if you do need to adjust a particular amount or say sometimes some patterns might have, say, a bit of gathering like right in the centre, like um, say under your bust area. So you can then have this um, if you've got like a flat section of a pattern and then a gather and then a flat. But that's how you would. And quite often you're pulling these threads and you either pull it out from the end or the thread breaks and then you have to start again. So it's really easy with the um, foot that it just, it does it all for you. So if I um, take off this foot, I'll show you again putting it on. Just for those, we might zoom in down here. And this foot is only a gathering, not a gathering and attaching. Correct. Yes, this one is only for the gathering. You'll need the um, overlocker attachment if you want to gather and attach at the same time. So I've got my uh, groove at the back. So I just have to lift my foot up a little bit and that hooks in. And then I just click it up to the front. So very easy. I'll show you on this slightly heavier fabric. So with this, because I want gathers, I need to lost my stylus, gone for a little roll. Oh no, I found it again. So I'm going to go stitch length of five and I'm going to take my thread tension all the way up to maybe an eight. And we're going to gather this up. So this is where, um, because this is a slightly heavier sort of fabric and um, it tends to not want to, um, it's a very tight weave cotton. Um, it tends to not want to do a lot of gathering. So what I do like to do is I sort of help it along a little bit and I just put my finger behind and I basically, um, and just holding that fabric to allow it to form a little bit more. And then after a few stitches, I can let go and I'll put my finger back in close to the back of the foot. Because if you hold it there too much, um, you don't want to push any fabric back in under the foot. You're just holding it, stopping it from sort of jumping out the back of the foot too much. If I just stitch the rest without that, you can see the difference in the gather. So here we are. Where's our camera? Somewhere. <laughs> So you can sort of see this end here where it's more gathered, that's where I was holding my finger behind the fabric, whereas this end here is less gathered. I just let it do its thing. So that's an, a little um, sort of like handy tip that if you want, if you've got a slightly heavier fabric, um, you can. And you do have a little bit of adjustment in here, so I can adjust out these gathers. So you still do have a little bit of movement there. Um, not quite the same as if you had done a manual gather, but you do have that option there too. So you can even out your gathers a little bit. Um, I don't know if we've got, oh no, I think I've shown everything we that we've got. Yes. Yeah. Needle plates. Oh, needle plates. Yes. A little bit more about the difference with those. Sure. Plates. Okay. Pop them on the bench. I'll put them here and I'll put this down. one out. Below it. Below it. Below it. Okay, so this is your standard needle plate. The, uh, and it, we often say it's got a jelly bean. It's got like a little sad face, but we can think of it as a little jelly bean, you know. But you can sort of, <laughs> it's got like a little jelly bean shape in here that sort of curves down at the ends. What that is, is that 
is, and the width of this will depend on your machine. This is a nine mil needle plate. So it's got nine mils from one side to the other. If you only had a five millimeter machine, that would be um, almost half that and would only be five millimeters across. Um, and that allows for any sort of decorative stitching. So all of your decorative stitches, zigzagging, blanket stitch, anything that you're doing which has width to it, you would need to use this plate because it's got the section there to allow the needle to swing and the needle will swing in there. If it's doing a zigzag, it'll swing to this side, then back to that side as the feed dogs are moving. Okay, so if we go down to our straight stitch needle plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is one of our this is our nine millimeter straight stitch needle plate it has got three little holes across the middle generally a round one in the center and then this one has got two very slight jelly bean shapes on either side and that is just for some of the settings allow for a little there's a little bit of movement um, on some stitches and some um uh, if the needle position changes for some particular feet. Um, you may have a needle plate that only has uh, two holes. Some of our um, older machines mm. only had a centre and one side. Um, some only also have the centre. And some only have the centre. There is another needle plate as well, which is our HP high performance um, needle plate that only has one hole, but it's off to um, the left-hand side. Left, yeah, left when you're looking at it. And it does say HP, and that's a specialty needle plate for some of our higher-end machines. But, um, yeah, so the main reason um, you would use the needle plate is, if I grab this piece of fabric, and if I place it, so I'm sewing. So I've got my needle. <laughs> I'm losing my stylus again. <laughs> so my needle, so my needle will be down here in this center hole, and I'll be stitching, say, near the edge of this fabric. So I'm stitching like here. So you can even see when I push in like that, when especially if your needle's not sharp, like I'm using a size 12 sharp because these are thinner sort of fabrics um, and cottons or woven fabrics. So I'm using a nice sharp needle. Sometimes when you're stitching down the edge of the fabrics, the if you, especially if you, as I said, your needle's slightly blunt, it tends to want to sometimes pull your fabric down in there. Um, or if you're quite close to the edge, there's nothing um, sort of holding this edge of the fabric. If I'm really like wanting to stitch a little tiny top stitch down here, there's nothing really holding this edge of the fabric. So if I put it over here to my, um, straight the zigzag needle plate if I stitch on there you can sort of see like that could pull down I don't know if you can quite see that if I push mm -hmm. down it sort of is grabbing so it so that's one of the things that can happen and it can happen um, say at the start of a seam sometimes it might pull your fabric down especially when you're working with things like the chiffon the straight stitch needle plate will stop that the other thing the straight stitch needle plate will do um, especially when you're straight stitching or embroidering is another one where we use it or free motion quilting is that it will hold your needle in place, especially when there's a lot of multi-directional. So free motion quilting, you're moving your fabric left and right and all that sort of, um, you know, up, down, roundabout, that having just the straight stitch needle plate stops any needle flex. So your needle has nowhere to go. It can't get broken as easily and things like that. Um, so that's the places where we um, recommend the straight stitch needle plate. So more accurate, and better stitch. Quality. Yeah, yeah. So more more accuracy, better stitch quality, um, and you get a much nicer finish for those straight stitches, or as we said, anything that uses just the needle going up and down in the one position, like embroidery or free motion quilting as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope we've been able to give you a little bit of information. And um, if you do need more information, there is information on our website. We do post these videos up onto our YouTube videos. So after we edit them a little bit, they go up there. So you can go on and watch if you've missed any of our previous um, accessories of the month or um, uh, information videos. 
We've got them all up there that you can look. We've got lots of projects up on our inspiration section of our website. So that's janomi.com.au. And you can also contact your um, local store that stocks Janome and they'll be able to help you with the right foot for your machine. And, um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining us today and we will see you next time.